Hello and welcome to my channel. I am back after another hiatus. Uh, the main reason why I haven't been posting a lot of videos again is because I've been super busy with my lab work, writing my paper, uh, I'm finishing up my master's program right now. Uh, but what I'm studying is related to psychedelics. So I figured why not take you guys kind of through what a day in my life is like. Um, obviously I'm just an intern, I'm a master's student, so the data is not mine, it's the PhD students, the sponsors, uh, the whole lab department. So I can't really show you or explain too many specifics about what I'm doing, but I can give you a quick little glimpse into what I do every day. And at the end of this video, I'll share a little more about how I got here and just my opinion or advice for people who might also want to get into psychedelic research. So here we go. So here's a day of an example where we don't have full testing day. Um, instead, we are doing a medical screening to ensure that participants are in good physical, psychological health to continue in the study because we're just studying healthy participants for now, not a um, clinical population. So we come a little bit early, set up the lab. Obviously, I can't show you uh, the part where the participants come in and we screen them, uh, but it takes about two to three hours uh, with the medical screening plus uh, getting them familiarized with what we're going to be doing on the actual trial days with the substance. So after that, I leave the psychopharmacology behavior labs and I walk on over to the cognitive sciences building. Here I spend some time working with EEG data. Uh, what I'm doing is I'm taking uh, event related potentials which is uh, looking at certain stimuli like auditory or visual and we are trying to see what changes are occurring in the brain following the stimulus and seeing if there is a difference with the participants who took the substances versus the placebo group. I'm currently using that data for my thesis so I'm really excited to see what the findings will be. So again, I'm really sorry that that was really short but again, I don't have any rights to the data or the protocol, so I really want to be careful with what I do share. Um, but that was kind of a shorter day where I'm on campus for maybe five hours on an actual test day where we are administering the substance. I am usually there for about eight hours from like 7 a.m. to like 5 p.m., 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., something around there. Oh wait, that's like 10 hours. Yeah, <laughs> those are long days. Um, but yeah, so this was a bit of a more chill day as an example. And currently I'm on campus about three to four days a week. I'll either have one or two full test days and then one or two days where I'm going in to do my uh, EEG processing and uh, screening new participants. I'm sure a question a lot of you will be asking is how did you get into psychedelic research? Because it is kind of like a tight bottleneck to get in right now um, because there is such sudden interest, a large amount of interest, but also because of that there are a lot of uh, startup companies uh, that are related to the research and development side of this. There are a lot of universities opening up labs for psychedelics. So if anything, it might be one of the best times to jump in, but you probably do need to already have a background, like a bachelor's degree in psychology, some type of biomedical sciences, uh, neuroscience, something related to the field or area that you want to go into. For me, I did my Bachelor's of Science in Psychology, uh, but after that I took a two-year gap working in somewhere completely different, and I absolutely hated it the whole time. I was not happy doing more business operations, accounting, uh, 
in a field that was not related to psychology at all and I found myself really feeling lost in life and that's why I realized I did my bachelor's in psychology for a reason. I'm actually very passionate about that. Um, I want to help people who have treatment resistant depression because that's something that I personally can relate to. I want to help people who are struggling with addictions, especially opioid addictions, because I have lost a childhood friend to that. Um, so I have a strong uh, passion for this area and so I was really motivated to get back in. So I looked all over the internet um, at all the different universities that have psychedelic studies going on. Uh, so you could just do a quick search of universities with psychedelic labs, um, but sometimes that won't show everything. So it's better to go on like Google Scholar and look up studies and then see what universities come up several times um, because sometimes universities are new to the area so they only have a few papers or sometimes it's only like one professor at that university is conducting the studies uh, but that will give you a lot more information than just looking at one page off of google so during my search, I was at first looking to do a master's program in the US because that's where I'm from, but master's programs in the US are so ridiculously expensive and there really are not many master's programs that will allow you to work with psychedelics. Uh, you pretty much have to go straight to a PhD, which is a common route to skip over a uh, terminal master's degree in the US. But here in Europe, master's degree is kind of like a necessary step before a PhD. You don't really hear about people going straight from bachelor's to a PhD. So I started looking over here and I came across a university called Maastricht University where they have a pretty good standing in the psychedelic research sphere. Uh, coincidentally, it's 30 minutes from where my Belgian side of the family lives, so it really felt like the universe was aligning everything for me. Uh, I also have Belgian citizenship because my dad was born and raised here, so I'm really lucky that I was able to get a uh, European tuition cost, which was only 2,000 euros for the full year, which now with the current exchange rate is about 2,000 US also. Meanwhile, a master's degree in the US is at least 40,000. Um, and again, that's not even with the opportunity to study psychedelics. So it really felt like this was the perfect opportunity. So moved abroad, came to the Netherlands to uh, study neuropsychology and work in the psychopharmacology lab. Now I realize for most people, you don't have just like easy access to like, oh, okay, let me just get European citizenship because I think most of you guys watching this probably are from North America. But still, a master's degree is cheaper here for international students than you'd be paying at home in the US. Uh, international fees for my university, for example, is about 20,000 for one year, uh, which is half the cost of what it would be in the US. Now, that's not including living expenses. If you are living with your parents or spouse while you are studying in the US, I guess then you're really not saving that much by having to come here and live on your own, but there is student housing. It's also not the case that you have to go the standard academic route of doing a bachelor's degree, then a PhD or a master's degree, then PhD, because I'll admit it is a pretty long, sometimes irritating process. If you really enjoy the process of the scientific method, being in a university setting, then by all means go for it. It's probably going to take you like 10 years for everything, bachelor's, master's, PhD, and then post-grad. It's like you're really committing to that academic life. Uh, but if you enjoy it, then there should be no harm in that. 
but for someone who maybe doesn't have a bachelor's degree or they did their bachelor's and they don't really see themselves continuing on with the whole politics and regulations and whatever that comes with academia then other options is to create your own startup um, again because this is a very new area of research we are many years from being able to provide direct help to people and many people are already self-medicating so options are to do some kind of training to be an integration coach or to be a facilitator maybe you can start a website that helps with networking with other practitioners uh, you can sell products that help with harm reduction you have to be a little creative like with any entrepreneurial uh, endeavor but there are a lot of opportunities i think in this moment to give value to other people and put yourself in a good standing where you are growing with this uh, evolving field. Another option is to work for a R&D company such as uh, MindMed, Atai. All those companies are constantly hiring and they are hiring people in uh, the business sector, financial, uh, if you have chemistry knowledge, and sometimes the roles do require higher level degrees but sometimes you just need a bachelor's degree with maybe some years of uh, experience something along those lines if you do decide that you want to apply to a graduate program or a uh, company this is the same advice you'll hear with almost anything you want to pursue in life but be very very motivated and very specific like don't be willing to sacrifice for something that is slightly different just be very straightforward with what you're looking for like when i applied to the master's programs i actually applied to a few just for security and i was pretty disappointed because the university of amsterdam which is one of the best universities in europe for psychology rejected me and they straight up told me we're sorry uh what you're interested in studying is not something we offer here and that's because in all of my applications in my motivation letter i said i really want to study psychedelics so me being very adamant about what my interest is led me to be rejected by some places but that in the end worked out for the best because that wouldn't have aligned with what I was interested in anyways, even if that school had a better name. I'm now at a university that has a lab specifically for what I wanted to study. So be very honest and frank about what you want uh, with yourself uh, and with whoever you are applying to or uh, networking with. With these three, options of either going the academic route going the corporate route or doing something entrepreneurial um, i don't think there is a best uh, route i think it is more dependent on what your interests are what your skills are and uh, i guess also your goal because they are all benefiting this renaissance in their own way um, academia is helping us confirm a lot of these uh, self-proclaimed benefits it is making it more i guess accepted in the eyes of the general population because we're able to run these randomized controlled trials that really show the safety and efficacy of these substances but again, it's a long process of having preclinical trials, phase one, phase two, phase three. So with academia, you're really trying to help this process in the long haul. You are contributing to the greater knowledge, but you might not be having the one-on-one -on -one, 
contact you might be having as a retreat facilitator, for example. If you really like working with people, you don't want to wait uh, five to ten years for everything to go through the clinical and legal process, then look into working at retreats or starting your own uh, center to help with integration or whatever it is. If your main area of interest is not necessarily helping a clinical population, but you still support how psychedelics can benefit society as a whole, maybe you have some background or skills in business, finance, uh, or legal representation, because those are all very important for the corporations in the field as well. As much as there is controversy in the psychedelic world about these corporations creating patents and for-profit uh, companies, those are going to be crucial in allowing the progress to occur because unfortunately we live in a society where finances, economics really do run what is given importance. So we need people in economics and finance as well. And of course, this whole process is an issue with legalization. So companies need legal advisement. They need people to help with understanding local and federal regulations. Um, so yeah, I truly believe that if you have an interest in psychedelics, no matter what your skills, knowledge, background is in, there is a way you can contribute. So I'm very excited for what the future holds. I hope this video was helpful in some ways. If you wanted more information about joining this psychedelic renaissance, psychedelic revolution, whatever you want to call it. Um, and I guess I will catch you guys next time after I'm done with my thesis. Bye.